Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. I'm going to start a series on CNC programming, setup, tool offsets, registers, just basically everything it's going to take you to make a simple part in a CNC machine if you've never done it. Now my machine behind me is a 4020A CNC Fadal. It's a three axis. It's got a four axis capability and rigid tap capability. The 4020 stands for 40 inch travel left and right, 20 inches in and out, and I believe it has a 16 inch vertical. So the capacity of this machine is pretty stout. It's a, it's a large machine for what I need it for. It does a nice job. Let's look at the console that we're going to talk about. It's a multi-processor CNC Fidal controller. And if you're not using the multi-processor CNC controller, some of the material I will present may be a little different than what you'll encounter when you walk up to your machine. I know I believe there's a Fidal 88 controller as well and some of these uh, may have Haas or Fanuc or God knows what kind but this is what I'm familiar with. Let's go over all the buttons and switches and knobs and I think that's a really good place to start. Uh, the buttons are the, the toggle switches across the top. A block skip. If you have a part that may have a hole in it or a cut in it that is very similar to the next part in line and you just want to write a single program but omit that particular feature in your program you can identify those lines of code with a front slash before the end and when you click this block skip on the program will see that you do not want to do those lines and it'll skip right over that move or tool call or ever however many lines you've identified with that front slash optional stop optional stop uh, when it finds an M1 code in your program, it will stop the machine wherever the machine is positioned at that time. So if you want to deliver the parts to the front of the machine and allow you to unload your fixture or check your part, maybe check a drilled hole before you run a tap down in it and you put an M1 in your code and you turn this on, when that program gets to that M1 line, it's going to stop. And just to initiate the program after that, you just hit the start button and it will continue. The light is just that when this machine is under power the light turns on the cabinet light and you can see what you're doing and the video is for the monitor. Emergency stop is one of those oh my god buttons. This stops everything. This stops the spindle, this stops the table, this stops everything. So if the machine is imminently going to crash or just did crash and it's self-destructing before your eyes hit this and make sure you hit it and turn it off. Rapid travel percentage rate. I believe the machine is coded to travel at 150 inches a minute uh, as a rapid default. Now don't quote me on that. I don't know that to be a fact. That's what I was told. But this is the percentage of that pre-programmed default that you allow the machine to go. If it's got to go a long distance, a lot of times, maybe you want to turn it up to 100% so you don't waste a lot of time. But just so I don't beat my machine against all the stops inside, I keep it at 50%. The feed rate and spindle controls directly below those emergency stop and rapid travel percentages are like volume controls for the operation that they control. One says feed rate and one is spindle. If you want to physically turn the spindle speed up or down manually, you can do that while the machine is running just by turning the knob. Or if you want the feed rate to increase to see if you can push your tools a little bit harder or slow them down because they're screaming for mercy, then this is the one to use. When you get into jogging your machine manually for a setup or any other reason you want to jog it, the lower left knob on the console controls the X, Y, Z, A, and B. And I'm not sure what the C is. If anybody knows what the C stands for, by all means, uh, let me know what that is. So if you want to move the table left to right, you use the X in and out. You use the Y. Z is up and down. A is rotate, I believe, and B would be tilt, or however you have the machine set up. When you have your axes selected that you want to move manually in your jog mode, this wheel right here is what will move the table positive, negative, or move the spindle up and down. Now, each one of these incremental lines on this dial, you can feel that there's a detent inside, so as you turn it, it's a positive stop to the next line. The sensitivity of those movements is determined by this knob right here. So if you want a very quick shift of the table, put it up on 10 thou. So it's basically a hundred thousandths of an inch per number, 
not per line, so it's 10 thousandths per, or you can dial it down as sensitive as one ten thousandth of an incremental shift per line. And this is for when you're really close to dialing in your part with your indicator and you're almost there and you just want to bump it just a little bit, dial it down to a tenth. But just for safety's sake, when I'm done moving my machine manually, I always return this to Z because the last thing you want to do is stop your tool down inside of a pocket and try to get the tool out and find out that you're on X or Y and when you crank your wheel, there goes your cutter and your part. So just a good rule of thumb, I always do, I return it to Z. Slide, hold, and start. There are two of those on this machine. You have start and slide hold and start and slide hold here. They do exactly the same thing. If the machine is an automatic and it's running and for some reason you just want to stop and take a look or blow something off, you can hit either of the slide holds. You're still in the automatic mode. The machine will just pause for a second so you can execute whatever task it is you want it to execute. When you want to continue with the program, hit the starts and off you go. Okay, so we know what the start and slide hold. The auto if you're in a program and there's capability of the program running on automatic, when you hit auto, your ready light will start to blink as soon as the machine recognizes that there's a viable program in there and it wants to continue. As soon as the light blinks, you hit the start button and make sure that your hands and your tools are clear inside the cabinet because the machine is about to move. That's how you know that the machine is in ready to move position when that blue light on top of the console lights up. Manual and spacebar will toggle you in between uh, full auto and manual while there's a program running, or it will toggle you between screens when you have a screen lit, and we'll light that up in a second. Single step is if you've had an animation on the screen and you just want to identify a certain line of code or get to a certain place or find it in the program, you can hit your single step button and it will walk you through as you hit it, each time you hit it, it will take you to the next line of code. If you want to jog your machine manually, move it left, right, in, out, up, and down, you hit the jog button. When you hit the jog button, the screen on the console will change, and then you select your X, Y, or Z, the sensitivity, and make your move. Spindle off is just that. It doesn't turn the machine off. It just turns the rotation of the spindle off. It says off and on, but by hitting it a second time, that does not mean the machine's going to come back on you have to hold the shift key down and hit the button in order for it to come back on. The coolant buttons, depending on how your machine is wired, coolant number one is usually your flood option, coolant two is a flood mist option. Tool in and out, this will reject the tool out of the spindle when the spindle is turned off. So if you're going to push this button, you better make sure that the other hand that you, God gave you is holding that tool that's coming down out of the spindle because there's an air draw bar up in here. And when you hit that button, you better be hanging on to this tool because this tool is going to drop straight down. If you have no support under that tool, naturally say goodbye to the tool and maybe the part. When you are setting your machine up or trying to retrieve, change, or modify an existing tool in the carousel, the turret CCW and turret CW, counterclockwise and clockwise, will move the umbrella turret to that tool position and allow you to manually pull the tool out of the turret. When you have a program up on the screen, the backspace button will take you to the previous page in the program. So you can hit backspace, backspace if you want to go up in the program. You can hit enter, enter, enter if you want to go to the next line in the program. If you want to go to the very top of the program, you can hit T for top. If you want to go all the way to the bottom of the program, you can hit the B for bottom. You want to change something on a specific line, you hit C. Now when we light the console up and we cover programs, I'll do this again, but please note that there are many of these keys that have multiple functions. Just because you hit something, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. It means it will put you in a prompt mode and allow you to execute that. The delete key, if you hit the delete, don't panic. If there's something you don't want to delete and you already hit that, hit the manual or the space bar, and that's like your, oh, thank God I have a back door kind of button button. All right. Well, there's an awful lot going on in that console, and when this machine came into this shop, I didn't even know how to turn it on, so I think that's a, probably a good place to start. 
Let's walk around the back of the machine, make sure the machine does have power, does have air, and does have oil. This is your oiler right here. It has a sight glass on the side. Make sure that your sight glass indicates that there is oil in the reservoir. If there is not, it goes in through this little trap door right there. So put oil in it. Start the machine is easy. Just take the switch and turn it on. This powers up all the motors and drivers in the machine, but does not turn on the console. In order to turn on the console that you control the machine by, press and hold this for a couple of seconds and listen for the audible click. And when you hear that click, just let it go. This is the spindle chiller. There's a reservoir inside this cabinet for chilling fluid. They recommend Dow Frost. Just make sure that you check this occasionally and make sure the level of the coolant inside of that is sufficient. The gauges on your uh, moisture separators should be active. This is the oiler pressure gauge. It's not going to show anything until this is called on to cycle and shoot some oil into the ways and the spindle. So don't be afraid if there's nothing showing on that one. It's okay. But you should hear it pop every once in a while like a little vacuum diaphragm. If you have done this successfully, you're going to get uh, a screen on your monitor that's going to ask you to cold start the machine. And a cold start is first thing in the morning. Once you turn it on, turn on your light, and just visually verify that the index marks on your tables are somewhat close to being lined up. X, Y, and Z. Now, I'm sorry if there's chips on this machine. This is not a Hollywood set. This is a production machine, so there you have it. Jog axis to home position. If those lines that I just pointed out are not close to where they need to be, then jog the machine and line them up by hitting the jog button, selecting X, Y, or Z and line them up. I'm going to hit the space bar right now until we get a command line down here that allows me to enter something. So here, so here comes the space bar. All right, enter next command. Hit CS on your, on your key panel right now. CS and hit enter. When you hit enter, the motors are going to jog the machine around ever so slightly and it's going to look for what it believes to be its zero 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 position so when you hit the enter button after the cs entry make sure that everything moves and if it doesn't call a repair guy let's see what it looks like okay right now the machine is looking for its zero position and unfortunately, I could only capture one of them, but I know all three of them moved. That's as far as I'm going to take this one. You have successfully turned on the machine, verified the air pressure, the oil levels. Uh, you're familiar with the console, and you have cold started the machine and zeroed your axis. That's it for now, guys. I'm not going to sign off and sign on the way I have been with all my other videos because there's about 29 different topics I have to cover in order to get you to cut apart. So until the next video, Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas, I'm out.